you all know this, it's <coughs> something that we can all do, even if we're not councillors. And it's something I did last week. Um, I don't know if you know this, but most council meetings, you can go in and speak, even if you're not a councillor. So, you know, you look down the, uh, the council website and see what's on, and you get uh, allocated some time, like uh, members of the public. So, have you all done that? I have. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, it, you get two minutes, so what you can do, you can make a little speech on, on, on whatever topic that you're going to speak. Make sure it is two minutes, so write it out before you get there and practice it, because they will stop you when you're in mid-flow. Well, this, well th th this was a little speech that I made last week, so I, I got there. Uh, I, did, I cut a little bit out, because I thought when I got there, I, there wasn't as many residents there as I thought, so I wound my neck in a little bit. But th this was the little speech, and I really felt good, because you had a council full of ch chamber, full of these arseholes, that have been shafting the people in this town, uh, and they're... <coughs> Tina and I are always telling you we, they want to build absolutely everywhere with their developer friends. So I, I got in there really, really early, and that's important if you're going to do this. Get in there early, get your name down, and make your two-minute speech, and it really does make you feel better. So a little bit at the beginning, I said, um, because what they've done, they're doing this vote. They wanted to give us 900 houses. And then all of a sudden, I see on the agenda, they want to stuff us with another 300 houses. So, anyway, I said this. Haybridge Parish Council have not been consulted about these extra homes, which makes 1,235. Unfortunately, the Haybridge Conservative councillors have won elections many times before here by way of uncontested elections. <coughs> I believe that they are now complacent, and that's why some of them do not appear to listen to the electorate, but instead take them for granted. The Haybridge residents have heard lots about lack of infrastructure from Councillor Rodney Bass when, for when he was up for re-election last year. It is funny now that after his re-election, is completely silent on these matters. <coughs> Perhaps now that Rodney Bass has been re-elected, he will only next reappear in 2016 at the next election. They're all looking really glum by now, because no one, no one says what, what they think. So, we are told by you that the population is getting older, and we need more housing for the res elderly residents. I wonder whether the half a million immigrants that are being let into this country every, every year has more to do with these unsustainable housing projects. When you become a councillor, you end up learning lots of abbreviations, like LDP or SIL. I hear the councillors talking about SIL all the time, which makes £16,000 to the district council for every house that's built. I have an abbreviation for you, councillors. This is what I believe you are planning for Haybridge. Haybridge, right, Community Replacement Action Plan. Crap, for short. <laughs> councillors, if you vote for this monstrous plan, you will forever be known as the Green Space Vampires. I urge you to use common sense and vote against this plan, or move this project to Wickham Bishops, to where a lot of the Tory councillors live, and let them have a dose of this proposed multicultural enrichment. Thank you. They don't like it up them. Yeah. I've got, I've got another little speech, if, if you're not all bored yet. No, no, carry on. Well, it was, uh, some of you might have heard it before, it, it was... Uh, <coughs> It was words. It was like words and phrases. I wrote these down some time ago. It was 30, 30 words that I was thinking about. The first word was in it. It's one of these little words that all the kids say now because they're pressurised into to becoming Afro-Caribbean kids. and They're just brainwashed in it. That's the word number one. Legalised cannabis, this is word number two. 
um, the Labour Party decriminalised cannabis and pandering to these African communities and their culture. And I believe it's making the indigenous population docile. And while we are docile, they're coming in, buying all the businesses up and uh, taking over our country. That's, that, that's word number two. Word number three, arranged marriage. I mean, what's that all about? Um, you know, we, we never used to know what the, the, these words were, arranged marriage. My parents had an arranged marriage. They, they arranged to be in Victoria Avenue, Avenue at three o'clock, and that was it. But now we hear arranged marriages. So it's another way of them bringing their pals in and their relatives normally, their cousins. And we all know when cousins marry, the gene pool goes down the toilet, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Hello, me. Um, that's this crap slowly being brought into our country. I thought we was a nation of animal lovers, you know. <clears throat> and now this, this crap is being force fed to us. Um, right under our noses, everywhere, you know, halal me. That's word, word number four. Uh, word number five, gangs <coughs> and gang prime, uh, crime. Well, we all know who these gangs are, don't we? We all know who they are. We, we watch the telly, we see them out there doing their business, we see them on crime watch, etc, etc. A lot of immigrants. Um, yeah, we don't need these people. Gangs and gang crime, word number five. Knife, uh, word number six, knife and gun crime. I mean, we never had that when we was kids, did we? There's no knife crime. Well, not, you know, you might have seen it on the telly, but, it, it, you, you know, now, it's, it's just an everyday word. Knife crime, gun crime, a shooting. Um... You know, this is another thing, this is another word we've, we've learned, we come to terms with, um, since, since we're being colonised. It's just another word we've had to come to terms with. Uh, word number seven, ritualistic genital mutilation. Hmm. I mean, bloody hell. I mean, that's, yeah, what's that all about? What, um, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, th th these are words. I never knew these words when, when, when we were younger. And now, it's an everyday bloody word. It, you know, it's going on from these these poor girls and, and boys of the, uh, you know, of the colonisers are doing it to them. And, you know, I think it's barbaric. They're sending them to Somalia. If, if, they, won't, if they can't get it done here, they're getting sent to Somalia. You know, in the school holidays and having it done, I think it's awful. You know, it's disgusting. So that's word number seven. Word number eight: HIV and AIDS. Well, we didn't have that. Where's that come from? Hmm? Africa. Africa. You know, we're seeing it. You know, we're even having doctors in our hospitals with AIDS and, uh, and HIV positive. You know, th this is a new thing. It's been brought into our country. You know, we don't want it here. It's been brought here by them. Um, yeah, so th that's word number eight. Uh, word number nine, people trafficking. I mean, th this is a word that I never heard of until fairly recently. I'm sure you haven't heard this word. But now we're, we're hearing it all the time, the bloody telly. You know, oh, people have been trafficked here, people have been trafficked there. Who's doing that? It's not us, is it? We ain't doing it. You're finding these people in these in the immigrants' shops, sweatshops and premises. Um, yeah, nothing good comes out of that. Uh, that's word number nine. And following on from that, word number ten, sex slaves. I mean... What has happened to our country when we're finding sex slaves in our, you know, in our midst? You know, we're not, we're not doing it. They are doing it. You know, you, finding these poor girls being rescued. You know, ten of them, five of them. It's almost you, you watch a telly. It's there, it's there in front of you, and you're thinking, how's this come about? You know, we're we're not involved. None of us are doing. It's all the immigrants. 
they're all involved in it. So that was word number 10. Um, word number 11, gang rape, Muslim paedophile grooming gangs. Well, that's a new word we've had to learn, isn't it? I mean, <coughs> Jack Straw, the arsehole, you know, he denied that this word was, was ever existed. He denied it. Tried to put Nick Griffin in prison over it. And now, it's everywhere, isn't it? Muslim grooming gangs. Oh, in bloody Rochdale, even in Oxford. All sorts of different, it's all in their areas. We're finding these Muslim paedophile grooming gangs. You know, it's a, it's a word that we've, we've had to learn, because it's a new word, isn't it? We, I never knew this word. So that's word number 11. Word number 12, Islamic extremism. That's a new word. I mean, these people coming here, being invited here by our government, and they're you know, and they're becoming extre extremists with all the money from uh, Saudi Arabia. They're selling us, we're, we're buying their oil, and in return they're using their money to set up mosques all over the country and, and the, their religious schools. And it's, it's a breeding ground for it, Islamic extremism, isn't it? I mean, we've all seen these programmes on telly, and, and, and they're, you know... They're brainwashing these kids to, to rise up against us, you know. So that's word number 12, Islamic extremism. And obviously, that's why we were all up the old Bailey the other week, because we want them scumbags to hang when they get found guilty. I'm sure we'll all be up there when the, when the trial's over. So, um, yeah, word number 12, okay. The last word, word number 13, as far as I'm concerned, this is the word why we've all come together here today and at other times, because this is the, as far as I'm concerned, this is the worst bloody word out of all of them. This is the word that we've learned 